that we just pray, Father, we come before you. We thank you, Lord, for this time that we can meet according to your word. And Father, I just pray, shut everyone in with yourself. And Father, I just pray everyone in here in church and online. We pray that you shut us away from the right. Father, open our minds, sets, and open and lead us by the spirit of wisdom. Father, reveal the truth of your word. Jesus could say the spirit of the upon me. I just want to pray the spirit of the upon me. He's not going to make preach. Thank you for it. You know, it's quite, and it's very confusing today in the age we're in. Uh, there's so much stuff there, so much availability. And even you go on the phone, you'll, you'll pick something up, and all of a sudden then there's different versions, different speaking, speaking all them thoughts. And it's very, very hard to stay, not watch and listen to everything on that. But wait, wait, I show you thinking. And this is, again, I've been speaking the last week about the faith. No, sorry, about the mysteries. Well, see, this morning, there's two things there. There's truth and there's falsehood. And if you, I, I read up in the board, you know, school, and I, I, I didn't know what to do or how to follow. But I was listening to certain people, and I would lead the word, the word just maybe didn't tie in the same. And then down the line, I followed certain places, found out that's not just exactly what it says. For example, I remember reading one night, John 8, verse 12. You look at these verses, John 8, verse 12. Jesus says, Jesus says, I am the light of the word. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. So here's the revelation. If I follow the Lord, I will never walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now, this, you need to understand this. You have to be so specific. And I started seeing, well, here's a person here, and this is to follow the Lord. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now, I don't know about you or who you're listening to. Could I ask you a question? If you follow them, do they tell you never walk in darkness? And you know what's here? We just brushed that off. But you know what's here? I started to follow the Lord. And really, at the end of the day, there's another wee verse that I'm not here this morning, but First Thessalonians 5, verse 5. You know what's here? If you read First Thessalonians 5, verse 5, ye are the children of light. And the children of the day. We are not of the night, we are not of darkness. And all I'm just saying to you is, we, the church, should be children of light. And Jesus says, I am the light of the word. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. Now here's the problem. I was following other things and doing other things. And then I get revelation. You must hear. I was reading Matthew, Mark, and John. He says, there's not too many people you can follow that can tell you you'll never walk in darkness. But I tell you this morning, Lord Jesus Christ is the light of the word. And you will not walk in darkness you follow the word. You know, as here, and as I, I started reading the Bible, different things, I read First Thessalonians 5, verse 5. Then, Paul comes along in First Corinthians chapter 11. What I'm really trying to do is set out a foundation here. And see the foundation you set out. If you follow the right foundation, your house will stay, and your house will have light, and your house will have total revelation as you walk. If you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Now, a lot of people today will tell you they believe in the apostolic teaching of Paul, but they don't. See, and that's the problem today is, at the end of the day, it's people with genuine hearts and tell them the truth. What do you say? It's 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I am of Christ. So who is Paul for? Christ. 
And he's saying, if you follow me as I follow Christ, now I don't know about you, do you check that out the person who does it? Is he following Christ or her? Well, Paul says, you be a follower of me as I follow Christ. And you know what's here? That's it's in there. But we maybe just don't pay very much heed. And this morning, I would like to bring you a thing about cross here. And you read this, and it's a wee bit maybe deep and back ahead. But you read this, a word called the faith. Okay. And Paul came and taught the mysteries of God. Because he was an apostle. Now, if you read through this here, see the Bible when you're there. So I seen that I was to follow the Lord. And I was to follow everyone who was teaching and followed them. But there's other things in the Bible that tells you. And if you have a passion translation, go with to Proverbs chapter 2. I said this on Friday night. And I was saying this here. There's things there you have to be careful you're not deceived. Okay. Proverbs chapter 2. This is the passion. And I'll read, I'll break in verse 10. When wisdom wins your heart and not revelation breaks in, true pleasure enters your soul. If you choose to follow good counsel, divine design will watch over you. So God wants to win your heart with the wisdom of God. God wants to lead your life by the wisdom of God. And when wisdom of God wins your heart, and revelation knowledge starts to come to you. That's what it says there. Now listen to this here. Verse, not much writing here. Verse 11, 12. It will rescue you from evil and disguise. What will rescue you from evil and disguise? The wisdom of God. Okay. If you go with a verse before, or if you choose to follow good counsel, the divine design will watch over you, and understanding will protect you from making poor choices. So you need to follow the Lord. Okay? You need to start and follow the apostolic teaching of Paul and those who follow the Lord. And here's another thing. Follow those who are walking by the wisdom of God, not the wisdom of this world. For wisdom of God will do things in your life and wisdom of God will protect you and keep you. And there's nothing else can stop you or protect you except the wisdom of God. Now see if you look here in this verse here, verse 12, Passion, Proverbs 2, it will rescue you from evil in disguise, a better minute, for those who speak duplicities. See that word duplicities? And I have on the phone. It's people who speak false things with motives in their heart. And the wisdom of God is the only thing that can protect you and me. And if you're not led by wisdom, then I tell you this, that it will rescue you from evil in disguise and from those who speak duplicities. Next verse. What's this? And from the right. For they have left the highway of holiness and walked in the ways of darkness. They take pleasure when evil prospers and thoroughly enjoy a life state of sin. But they're walking on a path to nowhere, wandering away into deep deception. We this read this. Only wisdom can save you from flattery. Only the wisdom of God can protect you and keep you on the right path. Now listen, most of us are led by the wisdom of the Lord. And I started to see God wants me to follow the Lord. And God wanted me to follow the apostolic teaching. But God wanted me to get to the stage where I was led by the wisdom of the Lord. Now if you look at these verses and really look at this and read it and read it and read it. Only wisdom can save you from flattery. So when somebody comes along and puts their arm around you and says, Oh, you, you're some, you're some operator. And woman, you're, I, you've, you'll be fantastic what I'm doing. And I think you're the woman who for this job. So what's going to protect you? There's nothing going to protect you except the wisdom. And if you're not led by the wisdom of God, you'll probably go off on a different slant. You know what's this wee bit here? You go on down to verse 20. Then it says this. Follow those who follow wisdom. Never mind following the Lord. 
and following that apostolic teaching of Paul and those who fought Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. But I tell you, that's what we should be looking for. Is the person or where I'm going, are they following Christ? Follow those who follow Christ. Here's another. Follow those who follow wisdom. Proverbs 2 verse 1. But I'm staying on the right path. The wisdom of God is the only thing that can protect and keep your life. Please. And if you read Proverbs 1, you'll have heard me before. And then they heard this and job and left this woman. And all of a sudden, I took a woman up the street. I thought, felt good inside myself. And I said to the Lord, the rest of them heard to cry them. And then the Lord says, and what about the times I cry? Nobody ever told me this before. Wisdom cries in the streets. She heard it. Proverbs 1 verse 1. And I come home that night and I said, you meant to say, Lord. The Lord said this to me. Since the day I, you could say about crying, to try and lead you by the wisdom of God. And you've never heard it. And I says, Lord, breaking down and crying, Lord, why didn't nobody tell me this? And that's what it says. Most is just shown that off. They got there. <laughs> Wisdom has been crying to lead your life, to guide you. And you do, have never met your students. And for the first time in my life, I get a revelation. And here's the key Lord, I choose. And I ask you to lead me and guide me by the wisdom of God. And if you read Proverbs 1, yeah, I've heard this before. Proverbs 1, verse. Right. Turn a my reproof, turn when wisdom cries to you. We should, we should this verse. Verse 23. Turn up my reproof, and I will pour out my spirit upon you. And that's pouring the spirit of wisdom upon your life. And if I opened that top of that, all that water would just pour out around me. But wisdom of God is trying to pour the spirit of wisdom upon you. Turn up my reproof, and I will pour my spirit onto you, and I will make known my words onto you. It's personal. It's the wisdom of God wants to personally lead your life and guide your life by the wisdom of words of God he wants to lead. Right? Because I've called and you refused. And I says, Lord, I know nobody have told me. And that's for the first time in my life by the population. God wants to lead me by wisdom. Not the wisdom of this word. Wisdom of God. I, years ago, I started to see that God wants to lead against the revelation. But I never realized for years that the spirit of wisdom was revealing the truth of Scripture to me. Uh, please. And you think, ah, oh, it takes you a long time to do this. See if you catch on to that straight away. God, from the night you could save, has been crying to try and lead your life by wisdom. What have you done about it? Well, nobody's told me. Well, fear this morning I'm trying to tell you. Lord wants to lead your life. He wants you to follow the Lord, Jesus Christ. He wants you to follow that apostolic teaching. But he also wants you to follow wisdom. I read it in Passion 2, verse 20. Wisdom is the only thing that can protect you from flattery. And wisdom is the only thing that can keep you on the right path. But see if you read on down uh, AV, Proverbs 1, the very last couple of verses. Whosoever hearken unto me shall dwell safe. Excuse me, and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. Now that's the protection and the power and the presence of the excellence of wisdom. And here's the key. You let everybody else do what they want. This morning you made a choice, no doubt, and fall wisdom. I'm going to hear, I'm going to sit at your feet, I'm going to wait and listen to wisdom. And did I tell you this, your way, your life is going to this transformation and the problem is we're connected to other people and we don't realize this but we still give them they don't want to go maybe that's wrong but you won't let them go and all i'm just saying is i started to see my own life i showed you that i would pour now listen there's a reason for the spirit of wisdom at the moment it's because of the condition of our heart we're ready it's because of the condition of your heart. 
that's found in Romans chapter 6. And if you go back to the gospel, the gospel is this, Christ died for your sins. Paul comes along and says, I preach on you that gospel, how Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture. Buried in Ozzy, third day, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 to 5. And then he comes along and then you receive Christ by calling upon God. What happens then? Christ comes into the living. You're not an Adam anymore. You're in Christ. And all the blessings of God now live in sin. Your wisdom must reveal this. And see, once you get the revelation that Christ now lives in, could I tell you this? There's another thing happens. I have a brother who was at a drum match yesterday. And he asked me to judge the drum match. I haven't won this years ago. The next thing, my brother says to me at the start of the drum match, he says to me, I say, I'm going to a meeting, you know. I says, what, bro, Dal? I'm going to George Bates and broke home. I says, right. I say, tell me this then. Do you save you? No. I said, you know how to get saved? Well, Christ died for, Christ died for our sons. So that's a good starting point. Uh, and he says to me, oh, there's something more. And I says, well, uh, what more do you think there is? I says, did Christ not do it? So you don't really believe what Christ done? And he anyway, that's where you get to people in the church. There's certain places to believe Christ done it all, but you need this. And you anyway, here, I used to turn around and I says, I'll be praying you for the revelation. Christ has done it on the cross, and all you have to do is call upon Christ. And the problem lies in sacred minds, we think we need to do something. No, they're all done it. But to cut a long story short, it's going on, it says to me, you know, what's here, it's no easy giving me up these drums, because they're a chug inside you, so you have to save them. And a lot of people don't maybe realize this, but if you go with me to Galatians, Chapter 5, just read it, sir. See, your spirit saved. And the penalty of sin is built. The power of sin is not broken. To you, watch this. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. For brethren, you be called on to liberty. Only use not your liberty for occasion to the flesh. But by love, serve one. So you don't realize this. A lot of people never really break through for the power of sin controls himself. And they maybe never seen what they need to break that power. But if you and I follow after a flesh, watch this we read Galatians chapter 6, verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit be the life of Christ. So if you have never been taught how to break the power of sin in your life, now the penalty of sin is up. Now if I was, see when I'm talking, I'm, you're talking to a person that struggles to break a habit and night on his head. And I used to th tie and listen to people on different things. And then I get a revelation one night, Lord, I can't. I can't break this. And here's the voice I heard on Satan. But I can. I can break. I, I'd come to the end of myself. I can't break this. But I can do it. So when can you do it? Well, if you go to Galatians chapter 6, verse 14, But God forbid that I should glory safe in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ is crucified on me, my poor. So we, we here will say, every believer, genuine true believer, has been co-crucified with Christ on the cross. Galatians 6 verse 14, 18. Every believer in Christ has been co-crucified with Christ. Okay? And Paul comes along which God forbid that I should glory safe in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
by whom the world is crucified on me and I am the world. So God reckons every believer died with Christ, died to the world, and died himself to the, to the world. For the crucified with Christ. But it's all possession. But the problem is, I read that one verse is there, he that soweth to his flesh of the flesh in corruption. And here's the problem. I want, and I could not break these desires that were coming in my life. And I tried, and I tried, and I tried to listen to other people and I read books. And then one night I said, Lord, I, Lord, I can't do this. And I said, Lord, says, but I can't. You right? You go to Galatians 2, verse 10. Paul comes along here. This is taught, this should be taught at water about this. Before you get water baptized. So what is water baptism? Water baptism is an identification of what happened to you on the cross. So here you are. You're going down into the water. And you're saying, listen, that's the last you've seen of what is bad. And when I rise up, I'm going down in here. But when I rise up, I have no free will. All his blood has died. And from here on is Christ. Do you hear what I said there? A dead man has no free will. Do you hear what I said there? A dead woman has no free will. So you're identifying that I'm going in here and I was crucified with Christ and I'm raised up a brand new creation with no free will. And most of us never been taught that. And you're struggling, I'm struggling. And if you go to if you go to Galatians 2 verse 20, I am crucified with Christ, Paul says, Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, Christ lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Of me, Jesus. Paul identified himself on the cross that I died with Christ. And it's no longer me, but Christ. Right? Now, if you go to Romans chapter 6, This is Paul coming along, teaching us. And I, really, I haven't really, I haven't intended to go through all this much, but Romans chapter 6, verse 1, and verse 3. Know ye not? Do you know what happened on the cross? Yes. Christ died, and I died with Christ. That's it. Know ye not? Okay. Now, here's, I start to look at this, as the Lord showed me. Know ye not? So many as us were baptized into Christ were baptized into death. So you're been baptized into the death. You've died with Christ. Verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Please read. You get a chance to read them verse. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. So you were crucified with Christ and I was crucified with Christ. Knowing this, right, okay, then. Verse, verse 11. Likewise, reckon, reckon that ye also yourselves be dead and come to sin. Reckon that you've died with Christ. So you're going to war, but I'm dead with Christ. Now, here's the problem. Yield your members a sense of right? Neither yield your members a sense of unrighteous anymore for the control to be controlled by your own nature. But yield your members as instruments of righteousness for God to control. And that's the first time I realized in my life it's the power of my members that's causing me to walk after the flesh. And for the first time in my life, I yielded everything to the Lord Jesus Christ. Although I was baptized years and years and years before this, but nobody ever told me. When I was going to walk, I was identifying myself, Christ on the cross, and I'm going on here. And I'm saying that's no longer be it. I know, I know what happened. Knowing this, I reckon, and now I yield. And from here, could I tell you this? For the, here's what I've done. I give my flesh, my soul, and my body, my mind, my will, and my emotions. In Romans 12, verse 1, I yield my body. Okay. And what the problem with my with me was I wanted to do my own thing and I wanted to do and nobody else tell me what to do. And I got a revelation that's not me before it's Christ. And I am identifying myself in the doubt. 
And listen from now on, Romans 6, verse 16. Know ye not to whom ye eat this so servant to be a servant of God? So now you become the servants of Christ with no free will. And that word servant there is notes. A bond slave of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that's when the power of sin will broke up my head. When I lined up with what God said have me on the <clears throat> My life started to be transformed. I started reading the Bible differently than I seen things. And I didn't realise this at the time. But my heart was in a different condition by I had to surrender to And the Spirit of God was able to start to do things in my life because I had a good heart. And for the sake of time, if you go with me to Mark 4, verse 24, you read about the parable of the sower. Mark 4, verse 24. Now, this is called on a good heart. And out of a good heart comes fruitfulness. And out of a good heart, which good ground, God can transform your life. Okay, then, Mark 4, Mark 4, and I Mark 4, verse 24. Matter of fact, I want to go to verse 20. And it talks here of the parable of the sower. And the parable of the sower is found in three places. It's found in Mark 4, Luke 8, and Matthew 13. But the only ground that's fruitful is the good ground. And the good ground is one who was totally yielded, completely, to the control of the Spirit of God. And as I told you about getting into what God does not yield it. If you read Romans 4, Matthew 4, verse 20, you read this. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, receive it, and bring forth fruit, some 30, some 60, and some 100. The heart that's yielded is good ground. And it hears the word. And it receives it. And brings forth fruit. Why does it do that? Because it's yielded. Now, if you get into the next verse after that, and he brought them as a lighted candle brought to under a bishop. But there's we hear this now. The heart that's yielded, and see if you're looking at the parable of the sower. The seed is the word of God. The ground is the heart. And the sower comes and sows the seed. And the reason why the seed is not grown in any of our lives is because of the condition of the heart. But when your heart is yielded, that allows the word of God to come and produce fruit in your life. Okay, and that's what I was trying to tell you you're identifying with in the baptism. You know, when you have yielded, you become a good heart. And God can start, and you read the words totally different, and the words start to come alive. But listen to this here, that's found in three different places. And I'll just go you look at it. And again, the par if you get a chance, go over the parable of sower and go over it and go over it and go over it. And can I tell you this? Look eight verse eighteen or fifteen. Look eight verse fifteen. But on the good ground are they which with an honest and good heart, see? With an honest and good heart. Having heard the word keep it, and bring forth fruit with patience. So it's the condition of the heart produces in your life. And the problem is, if you've never got that revelation of healing in Romans 6, you still have your free will on you or do thing. I'm going to tell you this, God can't control you because you've never given it. So you're not under the control of the Spirit of God. That's all it's bad. I yield it, and all of a sudden I come under the control of the Spirit of God. And I started to see things. Because my heart was in a great condition. And I did not know this. Now, if you go to Matthew 13, and this, when you start to do this, you're starting to follow 
the Spirit of God. Matthew 13. I'm supposed to say that you check this all out and go over it and go over it and go over it. And take your pen and write it out God reveals it. See I'm saying here it says, It is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. The Lord's told the disciples. Why? Because they were his disciples and their heart was right. And it's given unto them to know the mysteries. When your heart's right, it's given unto you to know the mysteries. See that? And if your heart's right, you will not see these things. Verse 11. Mark 13. Verse, but for, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of heaven, but to them it is not. Okay then. You go to Matthew 13. Verse 23. But he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understands it. So when you have a good heart and your heart's yielded, when you read the word and your heart's right, you'll be able to understand it. See what says that? He that hears the word. A lot of people say to me, I don't understand it. The reason is the condition of the heart. The condition of the heart, if your heart's right and you're yielded, the Lord will start to lead you and show you. Okay then. And you will understand what you're speaking and you're reading. He that received the seed into the good ground is he that hears the word and understands it, which also bear fruit and bring it forth some 160, some, some 30. That's the condition of the heart. And that's what we should be told at Mark Baptist. We're going down here and we're going to find we're using everything. And come up, we are now the servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, the devil of the bones. Old girl, woman, bone, woman, or bone, man. Now your heart's in the right condition. And now the word of God can come in and penetrate. And start, you'll start to understand the scriptures. Now if that has not happened, you will never understand the scriptures. And you'll have to listen to somebody else and try and take eat, eat back, go eat back, you'll grasp me back. Now listen. See when I'm here, if you read the next parable, that's the parable of the sword. The next parable is the parable, parable of the lady camp. And it's found in Mark 4 and Luke 8. Now, see if you read the parable of the lighted candle. I'll read it with you. have not translated. So your heart's right. You understand the scriptures and you start to read the word and receive it. Go to Mark 4, verse 23 and 24. Now, listen. Nobody ever showed me this. I sat down with the word and the Lord showed me this. I'm just trying to read you this morning. Mark 4, verse 23 and 24. Twenty-four. Pay close attention to what you hear. See, now you understand the word. Now you can hear the word. And now you can see the word. Pay close attention to what you hear. The more understand, more, the closer you listen, the more understanding we get. And I started reading the Bible. And I started seeing things. And then God caused the thing to happen. The open up door that I was, people asked me to speak. I went and spoke. The Lord had showed me. Listen, the closer you listen, the more understanding you'll be given. The closer, listen, you put your finger there. The closer you listen, you, the more understanding you'll be given. And you will receive even more. So God wants to lead your life because of the condition of your heart now, God wants to lead your life with more understanding and more enlightenment. Now God's starting to be open and save you by revealing the revelation of understanding the scriptures. And I'm not trying to take any, I'm just trying to show you the scriptures. Now what's this way about? If you go to Luke 8, it says the exact same thing. But see if you want the AV, it says, take heed to what you hear, AV. Right? And the, that's Mark 4. And if you could go to Luke 8, it says, take heed to how you hear. So you must pay attention to God's showing you and guiding you. And if you walk in that revelation, you, uh, God shows you, you'll start to see things and see scriptures, what really, how to walk in scripture. And that's, that's how, what I see from scripture. And when we're there, if you go to the next parable, it's the growing seed. 
Mark 5, verse 26. The kingdom of God is like a farmer who scatters seed on the ground night and day while he's asleep and wakes. The seed spreads and grows, but he does not understand it happens. The earth produces a crop its own first. A leaf blade pushes through, and the he heads of the wheat are formed, and finally the green rains. Now, there's, I know there's people in here who do plants and seed, but did I ask you a question? Do you know how that seed grows? No, you don't. You just put the seed down. So you put the seed into the ground. Yeah, you, you must have round. Throw the seed down the pot and it's no use. You must throw it under the ground. Not right. And put it in. Maybe it's just fertilizer. And then you hit the water on it. But can, do you know how it grows? No. It's the same with the seed, the word of God in your heart. Your heart's right. And God starts to show the word of God in your heart. You will start to see things and understand things. And we hear this wee bit, so is the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God, the word of God starts to grow in your heart. Because the conditions is there for growth. Does that all make sense there? I've covered quite a bit of stuff there. But I'm trying to tell you this morning, God wants you to be led. Remember the word of wisdom. And you remember him saying that. But go you now, 2 Chronicles 16 verse 1. See, for me to tell you, you do this and not have, no, no have, and only have you for the information for it. So if you go to Second Chronicles 16, verse 9, in the Old Testament, I'm going to read A.V., but I'll read it in 11. Second Chronicles. Now I've seen, and I started to look towards life. And I've seen that the sevenfold spirit rest in Christ. Isaiah 11, verse 1. And the sevenfold spirit started to produce in his life and empowers this life to cross. And if you go to Second Chronicles 16, verse 9, and if you're not more, you'll hear this, these things don't give enough. The eyes of the Lord run to and through the whole earth to show himself strong and with half of his heart is perfect towards him. So when your heart is perfect towards the Lord, and your heart is yielded, what you hear I'm going to do? The sevenfold spirit, which is the sevenfold spirit of God, is searching the whole earth. To show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is perfect to worship. So when your heart is yielded to God, the sevenfold spirit is yielded to your life. Right? New love. Nobody, please, nobody ever told me this. The Lord showed me that. And all I could do was apply what God showed me. Second chronic, second chronic, sixteen verse nine. Right, right, right. Hey, what's this? Second chronic, sixteen verse nine. The eyes of the Lord, which are the sevenfold spirit of God, spirit of the Lord, spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, mind, spirit of knowledge, spirit of fear, searching the whole earth to show Himself strong to the one who has a heart who is fully committed. Lord. Excuse me, I'll read it. The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to Him. So when your heart is fully committed to God, on the Lord, the sevenfold spirit is committed fully on you, blessing. And the body of Christ is never closed. Unless you have sevenfold spirit coming along and strengthening you and empowering you. Now go you now to Isaiah 11 verse 5. Now if you want to go and study the seven eyes of God, you go and study, there's 15 or 16 verses there of the seven eyes of God. But they're resting on the one who's yielded. So I could ask you a question, do you think you need to yield it? So how are you going to, how are you going to, how's your life going to be strengthened? And how's your life going to become situations? I thought seven four spirits not strengthened. Isaiah 11, verse 1, 5. Isaiah 11, verse 1, 5. And this is talking about the Lord Jesus. Right? And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, just like the one, the believer who's yielded, the said, 
The Spirit of the Lord will rest upon the youth of belief. The Spirit of Wisdom and understand. See, that's how you get sick, the wisdom of God. You become that youth of vessel, and the sevenfold Spirit starts to rest in your life. And as you walk and listen to the sevenfold Spirit, the Spirit of Wisdom will pour the Spirit of Wisdom. And I read the verse, Proverbs 1, verse 23. And the spirit of wisdom will start to lead and guide your life and into your heart and will start to reveal the scriptures. The body of Christ is not the best. And that will empower you to overcome and do everything in your life. Because the Holy Spirit has been part of life. And the spirit of wisdom has been poured out in your life. Now what's this new bit? I say on heaven, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, and the spirit of wisdom and understanding, and the spirit of counsel and might, and the spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding, and shall make you of quick understanding, the one who is either and empowered, who is prepared to walk in what the Lord should. Remember I read the first part of the tongue, pay close attention to what you hear, the closer you listen, the more understanding you hear. And I started to see things. And the Lord showed me one night, he said, if you don't walk in this, I was have that I used to go to people, down to a church, and I went down to Stevens, and I would preach what the Lord showed me. And as soon as I had that preach, I would say, are you going for a cup of tea? No, I would go. I knew it was going to drugs. But all I turned was try to walk in the Lord showed me. But I, here's what I'm trying to say. The Lord wants to do the same thing. I need your life. By the spirit, the seventh spirit. And as you're yielded, and that should be a, that should be preached at water baptism. You're going down here identifying it's no longer I do free will, it's me, I'm going crucified with Christ now, it's from here on in, I'm going to serve the Lord. That's his boss here. And did I tell you yes, that allows you to have a good heart, and then the scriptures come alive. If you walk in. And there these other people are coming along and trying to tell you this and take you off. And you must have the revelation and the power from the God to say, look, I'm going to follow your chosen. Now, I'll go for that verse again. Proverbs, Proverbs, I'm oh, sorry, Mark 4, verse. Again, I never heard any of this. I was telling them to go to church and do this, and clean up your act, and don't do this and don't do that. Nobody ever told me. I said, I can't stop this. I can't do this. Stop this flesh doing this. And then I get a revelation. God says to me, I can do it. So how do you mean? And the Lord showed me, you yield every me. And the power of, this, of God, I will break that stuff off your head. And supernaturally, stuff will go. Listen. There's nothing you can do without to God. God must do everything in your life. And it comes down from God. God doesn't want your academic to your skills, eh? God wants you to be a task that he can flow through. Go with me to Mark 4, verse 24. Pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given. Why? Because the sevenfold spirit is resting with you. Your heart's fully committed. Now you're under the control of the spirit of God. Now you can hear the counsel of God. And if you stay under the covering of God, God will take your life and he will lead you into the path of wisdom. And you will not go astray. Because Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk to. Now this world is in a very dark place, but it doesn't mean that we have to. We are children of light. We are children of the day. If we follow the day. And there's people around me and I know connected. And did I tell you yes, they want to follow a lot of things. Did I tell you yes, it's the spirit of the world. It's not the spirit of the world. I don't want to you, but what's this? Pay close attention to what you hear. And I'm saying you, you, the closer you listen, the more understanding you'll be given. 
and you will receive even more. But here's a wee bit. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding to give. But those who don't listen, even a little understanding that will take away. That's what I'm show you. You either walk and what I'm showing you, I'll take this okay. And I start, and I just started to try and walk with the show. And it was totally a lot of foreign stuff out there that everybody coming. But here's the key, just preach the word, preach the revelation. And remember I told you there, oh, uh, Pentecostal, like, see this here, only the wisdom of God can protect you. Only the wisdom of God can protect you. I read it in Proverbs 2. It's not, you and I may think we're very skillful, but that's only the wisdom of God can protect you from all the stuff that's going on here. All right, wait to show you this. I said to you there that Paul, full of Paul, now a lot of people today don't believe you should follow the Pauline epistles. They'll not come out open and say that. They'll do it hidden. Now, last Sunday I said this. During the week, I opened up the Bible and I read this verse. I've never seen it in the same context before. First Corinthians chapter 14. If you have a Bible, please open this if you, if you especially if you're new living passion. First Corinthians 14, verse 37 and 38. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. So the things that Paul read, what are they? They're commands from the Lord. And if you think you're spiritual or you're a prophet, or you're one to lead God's people. But you don't want to receive and, and the Paul's teaching. There are problems here. So if you go to the New Living Council, you see what that's it. If you meet some person that does not want to believe in apostles or apostolic teaching of Paul, can I tell you this? You ignore that person. At least for suspending that. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 37 30. If you claim to be a prophet or think you're spiritual, you should recognize that what I'm saying is a command from the Lord Himself. But if you don't recognize this, you yourself will not be recognized. If you don't believe in the apostolic teaching of the apostles, listen, don't you recognize that? Bit? And some of them versions say this I have a command from the authority of God, it said, for authority of the Lord. And listen, I have been trying to tell people follow the teachings of God as He follows Christ. Follow everyone who, who you have that revelation of the apostolic teachings. Does that make sense there? And all I'm just saying is, I've never seen that verse in the same context that I read. Do not recognize these people. Here's the problem. We will not stop. We reckon it. We fall. And then we lose the revelation right path. And see if you're going through this. So here we go. So the followers of light, okay? The followers of the Lord Jesus. Okay? Now if you go to the if you go to uh, if you go to John 14 percent, Jesus says, I am the way. The truth and the life. Now this is out of the Lord's mouth. Jesus says, I am the truth. I am the truth. And I am the life. You know, that's pretty. Both right there. Now Paul comes along here and says the same, but wait till he ask. If you go to Acts chapter 9. If you read your. You'll read in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and part of the Acts, you'll read about the disciples. And then after the Acts, there's no mention of the disciples. But the disciples became followers of the Lord. So a disciple is a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Does that make sense? Now, if you go to Acts chapter 9, verse 1, when you start to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, you're coming in opposition against things out here. It's not 
doesn't like you doing it. And you will come against oppositions and things in your life because you follow the Lord. And you go to Acts 9 verse 1. The soul yet breathing out threatenings and slandered against the disciples of the Lord. So you become a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ and the disciples. And you have a good heart for the sevenfold spirit resume in power of your life and open up the scriptures in your understanding. What's this feedback? Went out, went on to the high priest and desired letters to Damascus to the synagogue that he found any of this way, what way? And these people, after this, become known as the children of the way. Jesus says, I am the way. And they were followers and disciples of the Lord Jesus, children of the way. In that verse, the way is found in four or five places. It's found in Acts 9, verse 2. Right? And if Paul found any of this way, he put women or men up in prison. He didn't put, i.e., professing Christians in prison. He put the disciples up in prison. Right? If you go to Acts 19, verse 9, But when divers were hard and believed not, speak evil of that way. What way? The disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Paul came along and he took the disciples and separated them unto a school of Tyrannus. And he took aside the disciples and taught them a school of Tyrannus. Acts 19, verse 9. Because they would not receive the revelation and the teaching that he was teaching. And what was he teaching? If you go to verse 8, and he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three years, three months, the spirit was forbidden. He preached concerning the kingdom of God. And then you read verse 10, he preached to the Greeks and the Jews the Lord Jesus Christ. So there's the message. Preaching the kingdom, teaching those things concerning the Jesus Christ. Children of the way. People today, for some reason, don't want to preach the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the reason for it is coming from the Spirit. If you go to Acts 19, verse 9, sorry, Acts 19, Acts 19 verse 19, you know, right, and many of them, which you used to prove, are the price of them, verse 23, uh, and this. But the same stir, there was no, no small stir about that way. So when you start to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, and you become disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's going to stir a lot of things up. He's still going to prepare to walk. Right, okay then. Now if you go to the last one, Acts 24, verse 22, verse 24, verse 24, verse 24, verse 24. Can't see it. When Felix heard these things, are oh, there, there. And when Felix heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of them. And here's this morning, and I'm trying to say this. When you read your Bible, you'll read about the Lord Jesus Christ. And the disciples were disciples of the Lord. And later on, they became followers of Jesus Christ and known as the children of the way. Who followed the apostolic teaching that was handed down by 25 months ago. Now, see this here. I'm going to read a verse here. And see if you get a chance. You look into your Bible. So, Jesus says, I am the way. I am the life. I am the way. And Paul comes along. And he starts to teach this word, the faith. The faith. Yep, get the word faith. Right now, if you go with me, just go from First Timothy chapter 3, verse 9. So that was the apostolic teaching handed down for the church to follow. Right? And I never showed this verse, but if you read First Corinthians chapter 3, you'll read it. The only foundation can anyone lay is Christ. And then Paul came along. And it says, I'll, I'll just read it. So we really should be building upon Christ. Right, first Corinthians chapter. Three. Right. 
by the friend. Right. Right. Verse 11. For all other foundation can no man lay that is laid. Right. You can't build many other foundations other than Christ. Right. It doesn't say that building Jesus and Christ, the Messiah. Now, if you go to Ephesians, the common or not, thank you. If you go to Ephesians, you'll read this verse 2, two chapter 2, verse 20. I'll read verse 19. Now, therefore, there are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow saints and the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles. So we're building on Christ. But Christ has been built on the foundation of the apostles. Yeah, that. On prophets. So Paul comes along and he says in 1 Corinthians 4, it's been given unto us to know the mysteries of oh, First Corinthians chapter four. <laughs> that no man can count us as a minister. Listen, he's a minister of Christ. He's not a minister of God. He's a minister of Christ. Because you know why the Lord Jesus Christ is my example, and everything flows down through Christ. So He hands everything back to the Father. First Corinthians fifteen twenty four to twenty. And everything is Christ. And we are servants of Christ. And we tell us we're not under the Paul, but we're under the Lord of Christ. First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter. You, I never never think I'm under the Lord, I'm not under the Lord of Christ. Oh yeah, I tell you think. You're either under the Lord of Christ, or you're Lord of yourself. First Corinthians chapter four, verse one. Let a man so count as the minister of Christ. And stewards of the mysteries. So the mysteries have been given to the ministry of Christ. And Paul was one of these people. So it makes sense there. Okay. Half twelve. There's no bad no cover up master. The lesson that's here. So we're followers of the way, our followers of those who follow Christ. And these teachings have been handed down. To the minister of Christ to reveal stewards of the mystery. Get that. Now, if you read Acts 16, you'll read what Paul was sent out along with Barnabas as apostles. Matthew 13, verse 1 to 5. And then you'll read that who was sent out in Acts 14, verse 4, 14, and Acts 14, verse 20 to 25. And you'll read they were empowered to go preach and send forth to do it as apostles. But watch you this if you go to Acts 16. And at the man yesterday morning, no, I always thought I knew where all these things were the faith, the faith, the faith, the faith. And I've seen a thing Friday night. Friday, I've seen a thing, sorry, one I just couldn't see that before. If you watch this, you go to Acts 16, verse 4 and 5. And AV, and as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees to be kept. So they went through the city. And they delivered them the churches that decrees. Here's what you must keep. Yeah. They were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. Who ordained them? The apostles. And the elders. Next verse. And so were the churches established. And here it is, in the faith. And it's just saying faith, faith. And there's the word, the faith. And the faith really means the apostolic teaching handed down for the body of Christ. Now, there's no way, there's about 16 to 18 verses that I know of. Faith. Right? And Listen, this was given to the apostles to handle the church, and here's what we believe in it. Now, if you do on down a wee bit, if I can see this, look, what's this? Right. And you read this, Paul, verse 16, and it says, And after he had seen their vision, so Paul, these people asked Paul to go and preach, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit says, Don't go and preach there. So he's been led to the Spirit, and the Spirit told him not to. Then all of a sudden the Spirit told him, Go there. So they go there and they preach in verse 10 and after they've seen the vision immediately we endeavour to go into Macedonia 
I surely gather that the Lord had told us to preach the gospel on. So we came and were led the Spirit, as the Spirit told him to do it for us. Now if you want if you watch Lydia here in verse fourteen, a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple in the city of Thyatira, which was for God, heard us whose heart the Lord opened. We need to be praying the Lord would open people's hearts to receive the message. Unless the Lord opens people's hearts, they can't see the message. We need to pray, Lord, open people's hearts that they would see the revelation of the mystery of the word. See, the thing I want to show you, and I haven't intended to speak more on this, but if you go to 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 9, So never mind the apostolic teaching. It was the job of the elder or the bishop, whatever you want to call him, or the deacon, to hold forth the mystery of the apostolic teaching of the apostles. And they were to give it to the people. And that was God order, God's order. Go to 1 Timothy 3, verse 9. Paul comes along here and says, verse 8, Likewise must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, but really holding the mystery of the faith. The deacons were accountable to hold the mystery of the faith, the teaching. And if you go to Titus, the elders or the bishops were to hold forth the teaching that was taught them by the apostle. So that God's body of Christ will not be contaminated with wrong teaching. And that's not that's not the way it has to be. And all I'm just saying you see this word faith here. Listen to for holding the mystery of the faith. So that the faith, the apostolic teaching is a mystery. And it can only be revealed as hidden and it can only be revealed by by divine revelation. Now, this is everywhere. Honestly, this is everywhere. Now, if you go to Romans chapter 14, and I'm going to finish here. If you get a chance from this moment on, every time you see, especially maybe, if you mark the faith, do you see a many times this cross up? It's a mystery now. That's why people don't see that. It's a hidden revelation. And it can only be revealed by revelation. Go you with me, what did you say? Go by Romans 14, verse 1. Him that is weak in faith, doesn't say that. Him that is weak in the faith. And it's really saying here, a brother, sister of Christ, you and I shouldn't judge for saying anything else. And the reason why they're weak is because. They're weak in the faith. They're weak in the apostolic teaching that was handed down. That's not that we think, when I read that years ago, that this brother's weak. And of course, that's not it's weak in faith. I, I read that on Saturday, sorry, Friday, first time I seen it. No, I never seen it. And I haven't time. The time's gone. I have done 18 verses of scripture where you find out the faith in it. I just got this morning. Right? And Jude says, contend for the faith. So there's people come in here to pull it down. And you read in Jude 3 that they deny the Lord Jesus Christ. That's one of the signs. Jude, chapter 3. Prophet, when I give Dallas Ray on you, the common salvation, keep from me to Ray on you, and told you that you should earnestly contend for the faith. Which was once delivered on the sins. Right? For there are certain men crept on them who have got before of old, before or of old ordained, and God is turning the grace of God into the savageness and denying the Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why you don't get the Lord Jesus Christ. Just keep the day and the day. And the apostolic teaching of the apostles brought forth the teaching. For Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the age we're in. It's called apostasy. Moving away from divine order. And the two things is this. Turning the grace of God. 
in the loose heavens and the land of Jesus Christ. That's the age we're at. But what I'm just saying is, yes, and there's a whole pile of list of verses here. And you must hear, they're everywhere. I was watching this thing on the TV the other night, and I quoted 2 Timothy 4, verse 7. It says, I have, this man had done this, and says, I have done this, and I have done this, and I have kept faith. 2 Timothy 4, verse 7, I thought, my goodness, that he would be preaching that. And I, and I found, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, and I have kept the faith. That's that, I'm still teaching, I was hung down for him to preach. And all I'm just saying is, Unless the Lord reveals these secrets and truths to our hearts, and we see it, we'll never be able to walk. I just want to pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Father, we pray for everyone in here this morning, and everyone online, and everyone who gave this message. Father, we just pray that each one of us would be a yielded vessel of honor for the Lord Jesus Christ's glory. And Father, we would, as we would go forth, as heaven for spirit would lead our lives in divine wisdom and revelation. And as you empower us, Father, we pray that we walk in the full revelation of the apostolic teaching that was handed down for us. And Father, we pray for those that are not maybe walking in this way. Father, we pray that you come along and change their hearts and reveal to them the true way. Wisdom wants to lead and guide us. And thank you for listening. In the name of the Lord Jesus.